Welcome back everyone to my channel, my name is Ryson John. Gaya ng una kong video dito sa Architecture Review Series, may isa uli akong sample problem na i-analyze, especially para sa mga viewers and subscribers na nagre-request sa akin ng isa pang tutorial kung paano gamitin yung mga provisions sa Rule 7 and Rule 8 ng ating building code. Pag-uusapan natin uli ang mga development control terms like AMBF, BHL, OFB, and most specially, may emphasis tayo kung papaano ba kinakalculate yung AMVB. But before we begin, sana makasubscribe ka na rin sa channel ko by clicking the subscribe button either sa baba ng video or sa channel page ko para ma-notify ka sa mga future videos na ipopost ko tungkol sa mga ganitong topics. So, we have an architectural design and site planning problem here. Ang project is a proposed construction supply and hardware store. But first things first, babasahin ko muna yung buong problem para ma-acquaint tayo kung ano yung situation at ano ba yung kailangan nating isolve. So, basahin muna natin yung problem. Hired by a well-renowned corporation who owns a 1 in 54 hundredths hectare property located along a newly developed highway in a certain city in the Philippines, you are to design their new store that will supply hardware and building materials except concrete products. Access to the rectangular lot with a depth of 140 meters is via two parallel road rights of way, a 26 meter national highway at northeast and a 12 meter minor road at southwest. The city zoning ordinance requires an angular plane of 43 degrees on the highway and 63 degrees on the minor road. The entire vicinity, zoned as Commercial 2, has a constant slope of 2 and 25 hundredths percent from the highway down to the minor road. During your consultations with your client, you have ascertained the corporation's preferences. Number 1. There should be no abutments extending to the property lines, but footprint should be maximized using the least setback per code. Number two, the branch should have two floors, one basement, and one flat roof or deck. The roof deck will only contain mechanical equipment necessary for store operations. Number three, natural light is desired in the store interior. As such, a rectangular inner court at a length of 60 meters along the longitudinal axis of the building, open from the basement and up, must be provided. The court's centroid is positioned also at the centroid of the building. Number four, in each floor and the basement, the main store occupies 30% while services and utilities uses 5% of the total gross floor area of each of those levels. However, retail stores to be leased to concessionaires should account for 35% of the ground floor and of the second floor levels only. The remaining floor areas are common, non-leasable spaces toilets and circulation at ground floor and second floor, and parking at basement. Number five, the floor plate of the second floor should project outwards from the ground floor footprint below it to create an eave or canopy all around in the maximum distance of projection as allowed. Number six, based on feasibility studies, the retail store in this building must have an average floor area of 69 square meters but no greater than 70 square meters per leasable unit. Number seven, the ground floor should be one meter higher than the highway, the second floor level at five and five tenths meters above the ground floor, the roof deck at four and five tenths meters above the second floor, and the basement floor level at one and thirty-five hundredths meters below the minor road. And number eight, a parapet wall with a maximum constant height as allowed should cover the roof deck around the maximum building projection line. All answers should be based on the 2004 Implementing Rules and Regulations, or IRR, of the National Building Code of the Philippines. Bago tayo mag-proceed sa pag-answer ng mga questions, ang nire-recommend ko munang laging gagawin in any type of problem is to analyze, comprehend, and organize all the given data in such a way na magiging mas familiar ka na sa site conditions and the client requirements para wala tayong mamimiss out na important information pag isosolve na natin yung problem. So, line by line, we will extract the pertinent data from a paragraph form to an easier-to-read outline format. So itong stage na to ang tinatawag ko na project or problem analysis. So simulan na natin. Meron tayong 1.54 hectare na lot and then rectangular siya with a depth of 140 meters and then we have two parallel road right of ways may 26 meters sa northeast na national highway and may 12 meter na minor roads sa southwest. 
Meron din slope yung ating lot na 2.25% down from the highway to the minor road. So, so far, these are the information na patungkol sa site. And then, sa city zoning ordinance, according to the problem, may angular plane down na 43 degrees on the national highway and 63 degrees naman on the minor road. And then, the project location is in a C2 zone. So, these are all from the zoning ordinance problem. And then, we'll proceed with the information coming from the client. So, from number one, no abutments, maximum footprint, and least or minimum setback. And then, number two, yung project has two floors, one basement, and one roof deck. And then, yung roof deck daw will only contain mechanical equipment. And then, number three, may rectangular inner court na may 60 meters length along the longitudinal axis ng building, open from basement and up, and nakaposition siya sa centroid ng building. From number four, Ito yung mga areas sa building and per floor ang pag-describe sa problem. So, we have two floors and a basement. Main store daw occupies 30% nung lahat ng floors at saka yung basement. Then, 5% daw are services and utilities sa lahat uli ng floors and the basement. Retail stores naman is 35% pero ground floor and second floor lang. And then, yung natira na spaces are common and non-leasable. May toilets and circulation sa ground floor and second floor. And the rest naman sa basement are parking. From number 5, sabi yung second floor, floor plate is projected outwards from the ground floor at maximum projection. And then sa number 6, yung retail stores daw may laki na 69 square meters but hindi lalagpas ng 70 square meters per unit. So yung number 7, tungkol sa floor to floor heights, yung ground floor daw is 1 meter above the highway. Yung second floor naman is 5.5 meters above the ground floor. Roof deck naman is 4.5 meters above the second floor. And yung basement is 1.35 meters below the minor road. And then yung last item, yung number 8, tungkol sa parapet wall, maximum constant height, and around the maximum projection ng building. So these are the client preferences. Now that we have extracted all the information doon sa ating given the design problem, ang next ko nire-recommend na gawin is to be familiar with the site data. Meaning, from the text, i-convert mo na ito into an illustration. So, may analysis na tayong gagawin. So, from our site data, we'll now proceed in illustrating our site plan. According to the information that we have gathered, rectangular daw yung ating lote. So, let's say this is our lot with the four-sided property lines. And then, our total lot area or TLA is given as 1.54 hectares or since 1 hectare is 10,000 square meters, it's equivalent to 15,400 square meters. And this lot has a given depth or lalim na 140 meters. So, meron daw tayong dalawang parallel road right-of-way doon sa northeast and doon naman sa southwest. Sa northeast, makikita daw doon is a national highway na 26 meters daw ang lapad. And then on the southwest, we have a minor road na 12 meters naman yung width. So, given yung orientation ng mga roads, mapaplot na rin natin kung saan ng north na direction, south, east, and west, and even yung northwest and southeast. And then we have a sloping lot mula sa highway pababa sa minor road na 2.25% slope. Since given lang is yung lalim ng lote na 140 meters, pero di ba dahil rectangular ang ating lot, makukompute din rin natin yung lapad ng lote na to by simply dividing yung area na 15,400 square meters over the 140 lot depth and we'll get a value of 110 meters na lapad ng ating lote. And since yung site natin is sloping, we could also illustrate from the site plan our site profile. So let's make a section at this point. This is our minor road and the property line sa southwest and our site going up the national highway. And then this is another property line. Lagyan lang natin ng label. This is the 12 meter road and the 26 meter highway. And then we have the lot depth. The distance between the two property lines is 140 meters na lalim. And the slope is 2.25% from the highway down to the minor road. Since hindi pa given yung vertical distance ng highway down to the minor road, pero given yung slope and the depth ng lot, makukuha na rin natin yung height by using the formula of slope is equal to rise over run. So our slope is 0.0225 and our run is 140 meters 
we could get the slope by multiplying those two values and we'll get a height or rise of 3.15 meters. So, these illustrations, yan ang gagamitin nating basis sa pag-answer ng mga questions. So, meron tayong 14 questions dito sa ating given na design problem. So, simulan na natin. Question number one. This project would fall under which use or character of occupancy? A. Division E1 B. Division C2 C. Division C1 D. Division E2 or E. Division E3 Let's start answering question number 1. Ang project natin is A. Store that will supply hardware and building materials pero hindi kasali yung concrete products. So, nabanggit na kanina sa problem na ang entire vicinity is in a commercial 2 or C2 zone. So, ang commercial zones, mahati pa siya sa tatlo. So, yung C1 or light commercial, yung C2 or medium commercial, and C3 for metropolitan commercial or heavy commercial. C1 usually pertains to yung neighborhood and community level. C2 naman are municipal and city level. And C3, metropolitan level. Since light commercial lang C1, ang mga buildings na tinatayo doon sa zona C1 are usually low rise and low intensity. Sa medium commercial naman are medium rise and medium to high intensity. And sa C3 or metropolitan commercial are medium to high rise and high to very high intensity. Now, pagdating naman sa building use or occupancy, meron ding mga classification according sa code and these are divided into groups and divisions. Sa group A, which are business and mercantile use, ito yung mga patungol sa commercial in character. May tatlong divisions, yung division E1, division E2, and division E3. Now, doon kanina sa question number 1, merong nabanggit na ibang division, yung C1 and C2. Now, take note that Group C is for Education and Recreation Use and Occupancy na may dalawang division, yung C1 and yung C2. Now, dun tayo sa commercial, since commercial ang ating project. Yung Division E1, makikita mo dun sa Table 7.1 and the Schedule of Principal Use sa ating Building Code. Specifically, Item number 12, nakalagay na doon yung isang type of building na stores daw for construction supplies and building materials such as electrical and electronics, plumbing supplies, ceramic clay cement, and other similar products except CHBs, gravel, and sand, and other concrete products. So yung exact project natin na construction and hardware store na nagsusupply ng hardware and building materials except concrete products is nakaspecify na to be included doon sa Division E1. So, C2, ang ibig sabihin is commercial zone, pero hindi ibig sabihin na yung use mo is E2 ren. So, despite na yung vicinity was classified as a C2 or medium commercial zone for medium rise and medium to high intensity, ang tinatanong sa question is anong use or character of occupancy yung project nito. So, since based on the building code, Nakaspecify exactly sa table 7.1 that store supplying hardware and building materials except concrete is part of division E1 of group E, business and mercantile. So our answer for question number 1 is letter A, division E1 for the building use and character of occupancy. Question number 2, what is the allowable maximum building footprint or AMBF of this project? A. 10,840 square meters B. 12,320 square meters C. 13,416 square meters D. 11,550 square meters or E. 13,312 square meters Now let's answer question number 2 the AMBF. Maraming basis ang AMBF according sa code. Isa na doon yung minimum setbacks na makikita natin under tables 8.2 and 8.3. Meron pang isang basis, ito yung firewall provisions under the code. Makikita natin itong provision na to sa section 704.4. And the third basis is yung maximum allowable PSO na makikita naman natin sa table 8.1. And yung fourth basis is yung minimum required TOSL under table 8.G.6. And last basis is yung lot types na naka-illustrate sa code under figures 8.2. 
up to 8.8. So, para makompute natin yung AMBF, kailangan natin i-compare bawat isa yung mga provisions na ito. Starting with our minimum setback provision. Since commercial yung ating use or occupancy, ang gagamitin nating table based on minimum setbacks is yung table 8.3, which is based on the road right-of-way width. Now, take note that yung table 8.3 at saka yung 8.2 na rin are used kapag yung project mo is in a newly developed thoroughfare o yung bagong kalsada na gawa. So tulad ng project natin na banggit that it's located in a newly developed highway, pwede natin ngayong gamitin itong table 8.3. According sa site data kanina, meron tayong dalawang parallel na RROW. Yung isa ay yung nasa northeast na 26 meter RROW, yung national highway natin, at isa naman yung nasa southwest na 12 meters na minor road. So, dalawa yung ating RROW. Anong gagamitin natin doon sa table 8.3 na minimum setback? I-check natin kung anong range magpo-fall under yung ating dalawang parallel road right of way. So, may nakalista doon na 25 meter to 29 meter na range at ang sabi sa table is kailangan ng front side and rear setbacks na 6 meter, 3 meters, and 3 meters respectively. Diyan ang gagamitin natin for the national highway na 26 meter. Yung isa naman is sa 10 meter to 19 meter range, kailangan niya ng 5, 2, and 2 na front side and rear setbacks. Yan ang applicable sa ating 12 meters na minor road. So, kung i-illustrate natin yung rectangular lot, meron tayong dalawang parallel road right of way isa sa northeast at isa naman sa southwest. So, yung 26 meter highway and the 12 meter minor road. Mapapansin mo, meron tayong dalawang access point o yung dalawang frontage. So, isa dun sa southwest, isa sa northeast. So, dalawa pala ang ating front property lines. And of course, yung dalawang side property lines natin sa magkabilang gilid. So, itong lot configuration to is a through lot or tagusan. And then, if we will apply yung minimum setbacks natin based on table 8.3, ang gagamitin natin na front setback sa 26 meter road right of way is yung 6 meters. Kasi doon yung highway, no? And then yung 5 meters naman na front setback for the minor road doon sa southwest. Paano naman yung side yards? Eh, dalawa yung value. ba diba, ang setbacks are the minimum values. So that means kung minimum value ito, yung largest dapat na value pag kinumpare mo ang magiging stringent or mag-govern. Hindi pwede yung 2 meters kasi lalabagin niya yung 3 meters. So, ang gagamitin natin is 3 meters for our project. Now, applying the minimum setbacks, makukuha na natin yung lapad at lalim ng ating footprint na pwedeng pagtayuan. So, our footprint width, yung lapad ng ating pwedeng pagtayuan at grade level, is simply yung lapad ng ating lote, which is 110 meters, minus yung dalawang side setbacks natin at 3 meters each. So, 110 minus 3 minus 3 would be equal to 104 meters. Yan yung lapad ng footprint natin. And then, yung lalim naman ng footprint, ganun din yung procedure. Yung lalim ng lote natin, which is uh, 140 meters, may minus lang natin yung dalawang front setbacks. So, yung isang 6 meter at yung isang 5 meters. So, 140 minus 6 minus 5 is 129 meters na lalim ng ating footprint. So, that means our maximum footprint based on minimum setback provision would be a 104 meters by 129 meters or an area of 13,416 square meters. So, this would be our possible na allowable maximum building footprint based on minimum setback requirements. Now, let's compare naman yung susunod. Ah, fireball provision, di ba sabi sa problem is no abutments doon sa property line. So, hindi applicable itong provision to since wala tayong firewall na gagamitin. So, proceed na naman tayo sa third basis, yung maximum PSO, which stands for percentage of site occupancy. So, itong PSO is governed by table 8.1, which kapag commercial ang use and C2 yung zone without firewalls, ang sabi dun sa table, ang maximum PSO daw natin would be 75% of the total lot area or TLA. Since our TLA is 15,400 square meters, makukuha na agad natin yung maximum footprint based on PSO 
0.75 times 15,400 square meters is equal to 11,550 square meters. So that's our another possible AMBF based on PSO. Next is the minimum TOSL, which stands for Total Open Space Within Lot. This is found in Table 8.G.6. Ang sabi doon sa table, kapag tagusan yung lote or through lot without firewalls, ang gagamitin nating column dito is yung nasa dulo yung all other occupancies. Since ang building use and occupancy natin is E1, commercial lang ating zone. So, wala doon sa mga other columns. According to the table, ang TOSL natin na minimum is 20% ng total lot area. Since ang total lot area natin is yung TOSL or open space plus yung PSO o yung occupied space, kung given ang 20% na open, that means yung PSO would be 80%. So, ang ating maximum footprint based on TOSL provision would be 0.8 times 15,400 square meters is equal to 12,320 square meters. So, ito yung ating possible AMBF based on TOSL requirement. Now, yung last natin na AMBF basis are yung lot types. Yung figure 8.5 pertains to the through lot. Makikita mo sa figure for group E use or occupancy, kailangan daw ng 5% na open space. So, ibig sabihin, 95% ng lote pwede natin pagtayuan. To get the maximum footprint based on lot types, 0.95 times 15,400 square meter lot area or 14,630 square meters. So that's another possible AMBF. So meron tayong apat na iba't ibang value ng possible AMBF. Alin dito yung gagamitin? Since ang AMBF is a maximum value, this means that yung pinakamaliit natin na nakalculate na value ang mag-govern kasi yun ang pinaka-stringent sa lahat. So, hindi niya lalabagin yung ibang provisions ng code. Tatanggalin natin ngayon yung malalaking value at ang mag is yung AMBF based on maximum allowable PSO na 11,550 square meters. That's our answer for question number 2. Question number 3. To comply with site occupancy, what must be the resulting minimum width of the inner court? A. 3 meters B. 30.3 meters C. 31.1 meters D. 13.1 meters or E. 11.3 meters Sagutan naman natin ngayon yung question number 3, yung lapad ng ating inner court. So sabi sa problem, under client requirements or preferences, yung inner court daw natin is rectangular and 60 meters yung haba along the longitudinal axis ng building and nakaposition yung centroid niya sa center din ng building. So, illustrate natin yung ating rectangular lot and meron tayong dalawang road right of way na parallel kasi tagusan yung ating lote. Ang lalim ng lote is 140 meters at yung lapad niya is 110 meters. Now, kanina sa question number 2, nasagutan na natin yung maximum allowable footprint natin which is 11,550 square meters. But hindi pa natin alam yung dimensions ng area na to. Now, sa problem, sabi, kailangan wala daw abutment sa project and maximize daw yung footprint natin and then gagamit daw tayo yung pinakamaliit na setbacks. Paano ma-achieve ito? No abutments means no firewalls. Maximum footprint meaning gagamitin natin yung AMBF na 11,550 square meters and minimum setbacks, kailangan sundan daw natin yung table 8.3. So, yung table 8.3 pertains to minimum setbacks for commercial buildings based on uh, the lapad ng ating road right of way. So, if we plot this minimum setback sa site, we have 6 meters doon sa highway, and then 5 meters doon sa minor road, and then 3 meters sa dalawang gilid. Magkakaroon tayo ng matitirang area, which is yung building line natin, with an area of uh, 104 meters yung lapad, 
and 129 yung lalim kasi minimum setbacks ang ginamit natin. So, ang resulting area nito would be 104 times 129 is 13,416 square meters na nakuha na natin kanina sa question number 2. Pero yung AMBF natin, di ba, 11,550 square meters lang. So, paano yan? E, mas malaki yung building line area natin compared dun sa AMBF pag ginamit natin yung minimum setbacks. Paano natin ngayon sosolve ito at para masatisfy yung maximum footprint? Tingnan natin yung definition ng AMBF sa ating building code. Ang sabi doon, specifically excluded daw yung mga courts. So, kung excluded ng courts, imemenos natin kung ano man yung area ng court doon sa building na nasa loob ng footprint para makuha natin yung AMBF. So, even though gagamit tayo ng minimum setbacks para masatisfy yung client requirement, maa-achieve pa rin natin yung allowed na maximum footprint as per code by just subtracting yung area ng courts. So, footprint based on the minimum setbacks minus the area ng court, kailangan ang resulting value niya is yung AMBF natin na 11,550 square meters. So, yung footprint based on setbacks is 13,416 square meters minus yung area ng court na hindi pa natin alam is equal to 11,550 square meters. Therefore, yung area ng court natin could be solved simply by subtracting yung footprint based on setbacks doon sa AMBF natin. And ang resulting value would be 1,866 square meters na area pala na ang inner court natin. And then, sabi sa problem, di ba, 60 meters yung length tapos rectangular yung court. So, getting the width o yung lapad ng inner court would simply be dividing the area over the length of 60 meters. So, ang result would be 31.1 meter na lapad ng ating inner court. So, paano yung position ng inner court natin? Diba? Nakalagay daw siya sa center ng ating building. So, if these are the center lines ng building and along the longitudinal axis ng building yung depth is the 60 meter length ng rectangular inner court, the width is 31.1, we'll have this open area na nasa gitna na hindi na siya kasama sa ating AMBF or the building footprint. So, the inner court with an area of 1,866 square meters yung minenos natin dun sa building line area natin based on minimum setbacks. Ang resulting AMBF natin yung natirang shaded area which is 11,550 square meters. Satisfied yung lahat ng ating requirements na minimum setbacks, maximum footprint, and no abutments. Hindi pwedeng mas malaki yung lapad kasi liliit ngayon yung footprint hindi na siya AMBF. Hindi rin pwedeng mas manipis sa 31.1 kasi malalabag na yung maximum footprint na allowed. So, yung 31.1 meter, yun ang sagot natin for the width ng inner court. Question number 4. If 30% of the inner court will be unpaved service area or USA, how much area must still be allocated at the exterior yards to achieve the minimum required through open space? A. 566.6 square meters B. 536.2 square meters C. 210.2 square meters D. 176 square meters or E. 224.6 square meters Suburin muna natin to para masagutan natin yung question number 4 na patungkol sa true open space. Pag sinabing true open space, according sa building code, ang ibig lang sabihin nito ay yung USA or yung unpaved surface area na part ng TOSL or open space within the lot. So, ang USA ay makikita mo doon sa table 8.1 ng code na kapag commercial yung building and C2 yung zone without firewalls tulad ng project natin, ang minimum na USA required daw is... 5% ng TLA. So, since our TLA or total lot area is 15,400 square meters, i-multiply lang natin yung 5% para makuha natin yung minimum USA required. So, 0.05 times 15,400 square meters is equal to 770 square meters. Now, since meron na tayong inner court na ang area niya is 1,866 square meters at sabi dun sa question number 4, 30% daw ng inner court is USA na. So, 0.3 times 1,866 square meters is equal to 559.8 square meters. So, para malaman natin kung ilan pa yung remaining na USA na kailangan for the exterior yards, we simply subtract yung 30% ng inner court na USA na doon sa minimum required USA na 770 square meters. So, ang sagot is 210.2 square meters pa ang kailangan natin na area na dedicated sa USA 
for the exterior yards. Question number five. What is the maximum allowable gross floor area or GFA of this project? A. 146,200 square meters. B. 147,840 square meters. C. 166,320 square meters. D. 138,600 square meters. Or E. 155,440 square meters. Let's proceed to answer question number 5. So, burahin din natin muna to ulit. Question number 5 is the maximum allowable gross floor area or GFA. Now, sa code, GFA is equal to the TLA or total lot area times FALAR. FALAR means the floor to lot area ratio ng project natin. So, it, since it's a ratio, it's a percentage no, kung ilan yung floor area ng building mo over which kung gano'ng kalaki yung lote na pinagtatayuan niya. So, let's give some examples. So, let's say may lot tayo at kalahati doon inoccupy ng floor area ng building. So, this means 50% is occupied and our FALAR or ratio would be 50% then or 0.5 FALAR. Now, sa isang example naman, let's say buo, 100% tinayuan mo ng lote. Ang FALAR mo is 100% or 1.0. Now, pwede rin naman na maging kalahati lang ang tatayuan mo, but yung floor plate ng kalahati is typical for a second floor. So, 50% ka ng lote for the ground floor at 50% na occupied ng lote mo sa second floor. Ang floor mo is 100% pa rin, despite na hindi mo binuo yung inoccupy yung lot. Now, in another example, pwedeng manipis yung building mo, 25% lang ng lot ang inoccupy mo, but you have four floors. So, you have 25% on each floor, 25% sa ground floor, 25% sa second, 25% sa third, and another 25% sa fourth floor. Ang falar natin dyan is 100%. So, let's say mag-decide ka na mag-add pa ng another typical story na 25% floor plate na as a fifth floor, ang magiging floor to lot area ratio mo na is hindi na 100%, kundi 125% na or 1.25 falar. Now, sa code natin and sa zoning ordinance, nagsiset sila ng limits kung gano'ng kalaki or kataas ang building na pwede mong gawin with respect to the lot area ratio. So, sa code, makikita natin to sa table 7.g.1 na may FALAR designations ang bawat uh, use and occupancy and zoning. So, for commercial use and Z C2 zones, ang FALAR rights daw is nakalagay 3.6 or 360% up to 9.0 or 900%. So, 9 is the maximum allowable FALAR ng commercial and C2 use or zone. So, if GFA is equals to TLA times FALAR, yung maximum allowable GFA would be TLA times maximum allowable FALAR. So, since our TLA is 15,400 square meters, multiply that by the FALAR of 9, will result in a 138,600 square meters na maximum allowable GFA for our project. So that's our answer for question number 5. Question number 6. Considering the site conditions and angular plane limits, what is the allowable maximum volume of building or AMVB of this project? A. 266,956.76 cubic meters, B. 207,898.79 cubic meters, C. 241,488 cubic meters, D. 147,840 cubic meters, or E. 138,600 cubic meters. Now, let's solve for question number 6, the AMVB, or the Allowable Maximum Volume of the Building. The AMVB is another development control parameter in the building code to determine the building bulk or gano'n ka massive or bulky ang isang building na pwede mong itayo on a given property. So, it's generally determined using the AMBF expressed in square meters multiplied by the BHL which is expressed in meters. So, the resulting value is a volume unit or the AMVB in cubic meters. So, AMBF is our allowable maximum 
building footprint or the horizontal area usually of the floor in the code AMBF specifically excludes yung mga courts so in our case may inner court tayo excluded na siya doon sa AMBF so in question number 2 for our project, 11,550 square meters yung AMBF natin. The BHL naman stands for Building Height Limit and it could be found in Table 7.2 in the Building Code. For commercial and C2 zones, ang BHL is 18 meters measured from the established grade. So as per code, when we say Building Height Limit, it is a measurement of the height of the building from the established grade up to the topmost portion of the building. For example, yung parapet walls kasama. Now, I emphasize generally kasi yung determination ng AMVB hindi laging ganito. Bakit? Kasi ang AMVB, according to the code, it, it is defined as a volume nung pwede mong i-occupy that is above grade level pero included ang courts doon sa AMVB. So, it specifically includes yung courts like in our case, inner court. So, AMVB includes courts, pero yung AMBF, hindi kasama yung courts. So, paano natin i-rectify yung both definitions? Alin ba ang masusunod? So, let's first illustrate yung site plan natin na nakuha na. We have this uh, lot dimensions and our building footprint dimensions and yung inner court dimensions. And then, this is our building line, which is 104 meters by 129 meters or 13,416 square meters in area. Inner court natin is 31.1 by 60 or 1,866 square meters. So, our AMBF, imemenos mo yung inner court dun sa building line. So, ang resulting value is 11,550 square meters na nakuha natin kanina sa question number 2. So, ang AMVB, ang gagamitin natin is yung volume kasama yung courts. So, yung 13,416 square meters na building line area, hindi yung AMBF in this case. Kasi kasama ang inner courts sa AMVB. Now, ano ba ang process ng pagdetermine ng AMVB? Dalawang steps lang naman. The first step is projecting the AMBF prism. So, yung tinatawag nating AMBF prism, ito yung formula, yung AMBF multiplied by BHL, yung kaninang general determination ng AMVB. So, yung horizontal area, multiply mo lang kung ilang height in meters, makukuha mo na yung initial na AMVB. So, in our case, let's draw our site profile. Ito yung uh, measurements ng ating minor road, 12 meter road right of way na minor road, and then the 26 meter na national highway sa northeast, and then our lot depth is 140 meters, and then we have our um, Building line at the northeast and at the southwest, so my setbacks na required the minimum 5 meters sa minor road and 6 meters from the national highway. And then our building depth would be 129 meters. Now these lines are the AMBF projection lines no? in, in uh, the process of creating the AMBF prism. It's extended above the grade level and then our site is sloped, sabi sa problem, 2.25% from the National Highway down to the Binar Road. And the points of intersection ng AMBF projection line are the adjoining grades na tinatawag. So we have a highest adjoining grade dun sa upper portion ng slope and then a, the lowest adjoining grade dun naman sa lower portion ng slope. So these are the intersection ng AMBF projection line dun sa grade level. Ang sabi sa code, ang BHL is measured from the established grade. Ano ba yung established grade natin sa isang project? Kailangan natin ma-determine pag ang site natin is sloping, yung difference ng highest adjoining grade at yung lowest adjoining grade ang magde-determine kung saan ba yung established grade. So, if the difference between this at highest and the lowest adjoining grades is 3 meters or more, ang established grade daw, according to the code, is yung average o yung gitna. Pero kapag less than 3 meters yung difference ng highest and lowest adjoining grade, yung mag-go-govern is yung highest adjoining grade. That would be the established grade level. So, let's first determine ilan bang height nitong difference ng adjoining grades natin for our project. So, remember the slope is equals to rise over run. So, yung rise would be slope times the run. Or 0 0.0225 times 129 meters is equals to 2.9025 meters. So, less than 3. Ibig sabihin, our highest adjoining grade would be our official established grade. So, itong established grade would be the origin or the basis, yung zero elevation kung saan ka magbe-measure ng 
building height limit na 18 meters for the commercial or C2 project. So, this volume, 18 meters yung height, and ano yung horizontal area natin? Diba? Kasama yung court. So, yung building line na buo na area is 13,416 square meters. So, this shaded area, the AMBF na gagamitin natin is the, the one that includes courts. 13,416 times 18 meters is equal to 241,488 cubic meters. So, this is the volume that is part of the AMBF prism that is above the established grade. Pero sabi, di ba, above grade level yung AMVB. So, yung above grade, isasama pa natin yung triangular portion na ito, yung hindi pa natin nakakalculate kanina. So, how do we get the volume of this triangular sloping portion? We first get the area ng triangle. So, we already know that the height of this triangle is a right triangle na 2.9025 meters. And then, we have the length or the depth of the building, 129 meters. So, the area would be uh, the height times the depth divided by 2. And we'll get an area of 187.21125 square meters. Now, since we're looking for the volume, the volume of the right triangle would just be equal to the area of it multiplied by the building width, which is uh, according to our site plan, it's 104 meters. So, the area times 104 meters would be equal to 19,469.97 cubic meters. So, yan yung volume na nung ating triangle portion part of the basement that is below the established grade but not below grade level ah. it's still above grade level so we, when we add this volume to the already calculated na volume doon sa taas ng established grade natin na 241,488 cubic meters we'll get a total cubic meter of 260,957.97 cubic meters. So, this value would be our official AMBF prism. And this is an initial value kasi step 1 pa lang tayo. Now, the second and last step in determining the AMVP is by applying yung tinatawag na incremental setbacks, yung mga tapyas doon sa volume. Dalawang klase ang incremental setbacks. One is applied in the front using yung tinatawag na angular plane. And the other one is yung ina-apply sa sides and the rear using a provision doon sa building code that specifically states na kailangan maglagay ng incremental setbacks at the rate of 0.3 meter, an increase in the prescribed or minimum setback for each story above the second floor hanggang makadating ka sa 14th floor. So, that incremental setback only applies to the sides and the rear. So, according sa problem natin, dun sa front setbacks muna tayo. May angular plane na binanggit sa zoning ordinance. Ang angular plane is measured sa center ng road right of way. So, in our case, sa minor road, ito yung center line. And then, sa national highway, ito naman yung center line. And the measurement of the center line, syempre, yung half nung road right of way width. So, 6 meters doon sa minor road and 13 meters naman sa national highway. Now, doon sa problem, ang angular plane daw noong nasa minor road is 63 degrees. So, ito yon 63 degrees measured from the center line of the minor road. And sa kabila naman, national highway, we have a 43 degree angular plane. So, ito naman yon sa kabila. So, brain muna natin ito. So, we could um, draw yung angular plane natin in detail, doon sa minor road muna tayo, we will form a triangle using the 63 degree angle. And uh, this adjacent side is the 6 meter half of the road right of way plus the 5 meter setback until it reaches the building line, the vertical. So recall the tangent formulas. Tangent theta is op equals to opposite over adjacent. We can solve the opposite side, yung projection line natin. Tangent 63 degrees times 11 meters, which is the adjacent side, is equal to 21.588 meters. So, that's our height based on the 63 degree angle. Now, we have to check kung ano ba yung actual natin na height doon sa building and compare it with this calculated height based on the 63 degree angle. What we'll do is, we'll get the actual height from the topmost portion down to the angle 
dun sa center line ng road right of way, di ba, given na yung BHL natin na 18 meters hanggang doon sa established grade, and then yung below the established grade, meron na rin tayong nakuha kanina na height ng triangular portion ng below the established grade, which is 2.9025, hindi pa natin alam yung maliit na portion na to, yung from the lowest adjoining grade down to the minor road. Okay? So, this height na lang ang kulang para makuha natin yung actual height ng building. And this is solved using the same slope formula, 2.25% times yung 5 meter na run. So, makukuha natin yung rise, which is equal to 0.1125 meter. So, all of these heights, ipa-plus lang natin lahat to get the actual height measured from the minor road. So, the actual height is equal to 21.015 meters. So, paano ngayon ito? Anong ibig sabihin? Yung na-compute natin kanina na based on the tangent formula is 21.5887. Pero yung actual height natin is mas maliit, 21.015. Ibig sabihin niyan, yung angular plane na 63 degrees, lalagpasan niya yung building line natin, yung building volume, yung projection line. So, wala tayong magiging problem sa angular plane at this side. Kasi, okay naman, hindi siya lumagpas, walang kailangan tapyasan. Because the angular plane is yung limits ng building. Doon naman tayo sa kabila, yung national highway, Instead na 63 degrees, 43 degrees naman. So, let's try to illustrate yung triangle, the right triangle. We have the adjacent side na 6 meter setback plus 13 meters na half of the road right away or 19 meters. And then, we'll get the height of the AMBF projection line, tangent 43 degrees times 19 meters is equal to 17.7178 meters. And then, we'll compare that with the actual height of our building dito, dito sa side ng National Highway. Meron na tayong 18 meters na BHL, pero yung established grade natin mas mababa, di ba, doon sa highway. So, kunin muna natin yung height na to na 2.25% times 6 meter run. So, we have a height of 0.135 meter na imemenos natin doon sa BHL kasi yung established grade na sukat, mas mababa siya doon sa National Highway. So, the actual height would be 18 meters minus 0.135 meter is equal to 17.865 meters. So, that's the actual height measured from the National Highway. So, since our actual height is larger dun sa nakuha nating angular plane uh, using the tangent formula, so 17.865 yung actual height pero 17.7178 meters pa lang maghihit na nung angular plane limit dito sa point na ito along the the building volume and then dun din sa taas magkakaroon din ng point may intersection yung angular line ibig sabihin lahat ng lumagpas sa angular plane limit kailangan na tatanggalin or babawasan or tatapisan kasi malalabagin niya na yung tinatawag natin angular plane limit according to the building code so this small triangle must be removed so, buray muna natin itong portion na ito para makadrawing tayo ng mas malaking triangle na kailangan tapyasan. So, yung sloping line is the angular plane limit. We have a 43 degree angular plane. So, ibig sabihin congruent yung angle sa kabila, 43 degrees din. And then, the height of this portion ng AMBF projection line natin na vertical would simply be yung difference ng actual height dun sa nakuha natin na height nung opposite side. So, ang answer is 0.1472 meters for that side. And then, yung horizontal portion, yung top surface ng building volume natin would be using the tangent uh, function again. Since opposite side ng angle yung 0.1472 na nakalculate, that means yung adjacent side would be opposite divided by yung tangent theta or tangent 43 degrees. So, Ang sagot is 0.1578 meter, that's the adjacent side. So, now that we have the opposite and adjacent side, we can now calculate yung area and even the volume of this triangle. And the uh, area is 0.1472 meter times 0.1578 meter divided by 2, that's our area. And to get the volume, we multiply it by our building width which is 104 meters, so times 104 is equal to 1.207 cubic meters. So, that's the volume nung lumagpas doon sa angular plane na kailangan nating tanggalin. So, ano magiging itsura ng ating building volume? Ganito, matatanggal yung lahat ng lumagpas sa angular plane. So, tapos na tayo sa front incremental setback. Sa sides and rear naman, 
Sabi sa problem, two floors lang tayo, one basement and one flat roof deck. So, yung provision for the sides and rear incremental setback, not applicable. Kasi for buildings lang siya na may three floors and higher. So, our AMVB would be the projected AMBF prism na 260,957.97 cubic meters, which is just an initial prism, ilalas natin yung volume na nakuha natin doon sa pag-calculate ng angular plane, which is 1.207 cubic meters, will result to a total AMVB of 260,956.76 cubic meters. Itong AMVB na to, yan ang buong volume, yung shaded area sa illustration. So that means our answer for question number 6 is letter A, 260,956.76 cubic meters is our allowable maximum volume of building. Hindi ka na pwedeng lumagpas dyan in terms of the building bulk. Question number 7, what is the distance of the outermost faces of building or OFB from the front property line located at northeast? A. 2.4 meters, B, 6 meters, C, 3.6 meters, D, 5 meters, or E, 2 meters. Now let's answer question number 7, the outermost faces of the building or the OFB. Let's draw first a typical section ng front yard ng isang building. So we have the front property line fronting the road right of way. And this is our facade or the building line na may front setback away from the front property line. And this is our OFB or yung outermost face of the building. Now in our case, sabi sa problem, yung floor plate daw ng upper floor or yung the second floor should project outwards away from the ground floor footprint below it. So yung section ng building natin, hindi na diretso. Magkakaroon tayo ng projection na maximum distance daw sabi ng uh, problem and client requirements. So, yung OFB natin na official would be much nearer sa front property line than the front setback na nasa grade level. So, ang tinatanong is ano daw yung distance nung OFB natin from the front property line dun sa northeast. Yung northeast yun yung highway natin, right? So, yung maximum projection is governed by what we call the outermost limits of building projection or OLBP. According sa building code, hindi pwedeng lumagpas ang mga projection ng 60% kung anuman yung prescribed setback doon sa given na property line. So, in our case, kailangan nating alamin kung ano ba yung front setback, which nakuha na natin kanina sa question number 2 yung minimum setback requirements or provision. So, if you illustrate uli yung ating site plan, this is our maximum building footprint, okay, yung shaded area, and then applying the minimum setbacks around it, yung 6 meters sa highway, 5 meters sa minor road, and 3 meters sa magkabilang gilid. And the boundary ng shaded area is our OF, OFB at grade level, okay, and northeast yung national highway and uh, southwest naman yung minor road. So, ang concern natin sa question number 7, yung front property line doon sa northeast along the uh, national highway. So, kung 60% daw ng prescribed setback yung sagad na maximum projection, yung setback is 6 meters na minimum, kukunin lang natin yung 60% ng 6 meters. So, 0.6 times 6 is equal to 3.6 meters. Ito yung OFB natin na lalabas doon sa second floor or the outermost limits ng building projection natin for the second floor. 3.6 meters sagad or 60% nung prescribed setback na 6 meter along that national highway. Pero ang tanong sa question number 7 is ano yung distance ng OFB doon sa second floor papunta sa front property line. So we only... We can uh, simply subtract yung uh, maximum projection natin doon sa minimum setback requirement, 6 meters minus 3.6 meters, and we'll reach the value of 2.4 meter. Nasagot natin sa question number 7, ang distance ng OFB at second floor papunta sa front property line. Question number 8, determine the actual floor plate of the second floor. A. 13,338.6 square meters, B, 
12,685 square meters, C, 14,590.56 square meters, D, 13,416 square meters, or E, 12,724.56 square meters. Okay, burin ko muna to para makuha natin yung question number 8, the actual second floor floor plate. According sa problem, yung floor plate ng second floor is nakaprotrude daw at a maximum distance of projection as allowed from the ground floor. So, in our earlier illustration, sa question number 7, what we'll do is just to complete the entire second floor floor line above the ground floor and find those maximum projection which according sa code is 60% is the maximum ng prescribed setback for the OLBP. So, we'll get all the minimum setbacks so of 5 sa southwest and 3 on both sides of the property and multiply those numbers by 60%. We'll get 3 meters for the 5 meter setback at southwest and 1.8 meters maximum projection at both sides of the 3 meter setback. And since our OFB at grade has uh, dimensions of uh, 104 building within 129 building depth, to get the actual floor plate or floor area of the second floor above, we'll add those projections na nakalculate kanina. So 104 building width plus 1.8 and 1.8 on both sides. Tapos yung building depth naman ng 129 meters sa ground floor, i-add natin yung 3 meters sa southwest and 3.6 meters kanina na nakuha natin sa questions number 7 sa northeast. And we'll get the dimensions ng floor plate natin of the second floor. So yung lapad ng second floor is 107.6 meters at yung lalim naman ng second floor floor plate is 135.6 meters. So, ito yung dimensions ng OFB or the building line ng second floor. Pero hindi pa natin pwedeng kunin agad yung buong area kasi may inner court pa tayo na may dimensions sa 31.1 meter by 60 meter according sa question number 3. And ang area ng inner court is 1,866 square meters. So, para makuha natin yung sagot ng question number 8, kunin muna natin yung area ng buong building line ng second floor and minus natin yung inner court area na 1866. Ang resulting area is 12,724.56 square meters and yun yung shaded na yellow area dito sa illustration natin and our answer for question number 8, the second floor floor plate. Question number 9. Calculate the actual height from basement floor finish line to the ground floor finish line. A. 5.85 meters B, 5.5 meters, C, 4.2 meters, D, 5.25 meters, or E, 4.15 meters. Now let's solve for question number 9, the actual height from basement floor finish line to the ground floor finish line. According to the design problem, in one of the client preferences, the ground floor is 1 meter higher than the highway and the basement floor is 1.35 meters below the minor road. So if we draw our site profile and we have the property lines sa so southwest and property line naman sa northeast and this is our dimension, yung 12 meter na road right of way which is our minor road and the 26 meter road right of way which is our national highway and we have a 140 meters na lot depth. Then we have our building lines, and this broken line is yung basement level. So our setbacks is 5 meter setback sa southwest and 6 meter setback sa northeast. Here we have a building depth na 129 meters. And our basement floor level, according to the client preference, is 1.35 meters below the level of the minor road, which is our lowest point sa property line. So, 1.35 meters. And then, the ground floor level is higher than the highway. So, if this is our ground floor, yung measurement from the highest point of the property, 1 meter above it would be the ground floor finish line. So, this is 1 meter. Now, according to the question, the actual height from basement floor finish line to the ground floor finish line is what is being sought doon sa problem. So this is still unknown. That's what we need to find out. 
And then based on the site data, di ba, given na yung slope ng ating lot, which is 2.25% from the highway down to the minor road, this means we could calculate the height of this difference by simply using the slope formula of rise over run. So since we have a right triangle, so calculating the rise would just be the run of 140 meters multiplied by 2.25% slope. So 140 times 0 0.0225 is equal to 3.15 meters rise. This means that the total height from the basement to the ground floor is simply the sum of all these elevations. So 1 meter plus 3.15 plus 1.35 is equal to 5.5 meters. And that's our answer for question number 9. The height from basement to ground floor. Question number 10. What would be the actual building height of this project measured from the established grade? A. 12,685 millimeters. B. 14,360 millimeters. C. 12,550 millimeters. D. 18,000 millimeters. Or E. 14,495 millimeters. Now, let's continue our illustration kanina sa question number 9 and solve for question number 10. What is the actual height of our building measured from the established grade level? So, from our question number 6 kanina, na banggit na yung term na established grade and na determine natin that the established grade is the highest adjoining grade which is this point. So, this is our established grade. And according to the client preferences and yung illustration natin kanina sa question number 9, na sagutan na natin yung level ng ground floor and yung level ng basement. And now we proceed to the second floor level naman. Um, sabi sa problem, may height daw na 5.5 meters above the ground floor yung second floor. So this is the 5.5 meter elevation. But before we proceed to the roof deck, sabi sa isa pang criteria, yung client preferences, yung floor plate ng second floor, hindi ba nakal-project siya outwards according sa question number 8 natin kanina at a 60% maximum distance or yung OLBP kung ano man yung setback na prescribed. So, in our northeast side, dun sa highway, 60% ng 6 meters is 3.6 meter projection maximum. So, this measurement of the projection ng second floor is 3.6 our OFB at yung natira is 2.4 measurements sa property line. And then sa may southwest naman is 60% ng 5 meters is 3 meters. That's our OFB for the second floor. And 2 meters yung natira away from the property line. So we'll proceed now doon sa roof deck na ang measurement daw according sa criteria is 4.5 meters above the second floor. So that's the, the vertical measurement. Now, yung parapet wall dun sa last criteria ng preference ng client, kailangan daw may maximum constant height. So, pantay siya at the maximum height allowed along the maximum building projection line nung uh, structure natin. So, this is the parapet wall and yung maximum projection or building projection line is this line na, na nasa second floor natin, di ba nakasagad na sa 60% ng OLBP. And then sa kabilang side, ganun din, yung OLBP natin 60%, dyan din yung parapet wall natin for the roof deck. So yung height ng parapet walls around the roof deck along the maximum projection line is at a maximum constant height. Pero hindi pa natin alam kung ano yung value na to. Now our actual building height measured from the established grade would be this measurement. From established grade up to the top of the parapet wall. Pwede natin sanang i-plus na lahat ng elevation ng floor-to-floor -floor height, kaya lang hindi pa natin alam yung height ng parapet wall. Now, according sa problem, kailangan natin i-consider yung angular plane limit para makuha natin yung maximum height ng parapet wall. So, at the highway, yung center line natin is 13 meters kasi kalahati ng 26 meter RROW. And this is the 43 degree na angular plane limit. Dun sa kabila naman, the minor road, the center line would be at 6 meters away from the property line kasi kalahati ng 12 meter RROW and yung angular plane limit naman is 63 degrees. So kung mapapansin mo, meron tayong mafoform na right triangles based on the angular plane. So dito yung vertical and dito yung horizontal. Yung 
triangle na to, which is a right triangle, let's draw it again for clarity. We have the angular plane of 43 degrees and yung adjacent side ng triangle natin is ito, yung 2.4 meters plus the 13 meters half of road right of way, which is equal to 15.4 meters. Okay? Kasi dun dun along the line of the building projection. So this height, yung opposite side ng triangle would be tangent 43 degrees times the adjacent side of 15.4 meters is equal to 14.36 meters. So itong height na to, that's the measurement from the national highway up to the parapet wall height, yung top ng structure na natin. So since given na yung floor to floor heights, ground floor 1 meter, 5.5 meter, 4.5 meter up to the roof deck, except the parapet wall, we'll just subtract yung nakuhang 14.36 meters less all of the given heights na floor to floor, which is 4.5 meter minus 5.5 meters minus 1 meter, ang resulting value niya is yung natitirang height ng parapet wall, which is 3.36 meters according to this calculations. So, as far as the highway side is concerned, 3.36 meters ang max since pag pre mo yung 43 degrees, na angular plane limit, saktong-sakto yung 3.36 meters na maximum height na parapet doon sa intersection ng angular plane limit. So, sakto, hindi siya lalagpas, hindi rin siya kulang. Now, we'll do the same dito sa kabilang side, minor road. May right triangle din tayo mafuform based on the 63 degree na angular plane. So, drawing the right triangle, we have the adjacent side. Ito yon yung 6 meter half of road right of way plus 2 meters na up to the OFB ng second floor. So, 6 plus 2 is equals to 8 meters. And then, the opposite side of the angle can be solved by using the tangent function again. Tangent 63 degrees times 8 meter adjacent side is equal to 15.7 meters, the opposite side. So, this 15 meters is the height from the minor road up to the parapet wall, no? yung top, based on the 63 degree angular plane. So, ganun din ang gagawin natin. Subtract the 15.7 meter opposite side total with all of the floor heights na given na nakuha na natin kanina. So, 4.5 minus 5.5 minus 1 meter. Ngayon, may kailangan pa tayong idagdag yung Difference ng elevation ng highest adjoining grade to the lowest adjoining grade na 3.15 meter para makuha natin up to the level ng minor road. Ang uh, resulting value is 1.55 meters. So that's the height of the parapet wall kasi yan yung balance doon sa 15.7 meter. Ibig sabihin, as far as minor road is concerned, ang maximum height daw ng parapet wall should be 1.55 meters lang. Kasi kapag pre-noject mo tong 63 degree angular plane, at the point 1.55 meter above the roof deck level, nandudun na yung intersection ng angular plane limit. So, hindi ka pwedeng lumagpas na dun. So, that means, yung height ng parapet wall natin, since constant yung height, ibig sabihin, pare-parehas, hindi magkakaiba yung height, should be yung pinakamababang nakuha natin, since maximum. So, that's the mo most stringent, the 1.55 meter. Hindi pa pwede palang 3.35, so x na itong nasa taas. This line would be our final parapet wall height and this line is our established grade. So, calculating the actual building height from those points, you have 1.55 meter parapet wall height plus 4.5 meter floor to floor height ng second floor, 5.5 meter ng ground floor and 1 meter ng elevation. Plus pa natin yung diferensya ng uh, established grade up to the national highway. So, since meron ulit tayong mapoform na slope, so, getting the rise would be 6 meter run times the slope of 2.25% is equal to 0.135 meters. Ipa-plus pa natin yon para makaabot tayo sa established grade level. So, adding those values, we'll have a resulting value of 12.685 meters. And that's our actual building height measured from the established grade considering yung mga angular plane limits natin. 12,685 millimeters. Question number 11. What is the actual total gross floor area or TGFA of this project? A. 48,549.12 square meters B. 46,200 square meters C. 50,415.12 square meters D. 56,013.12 square meters or E. 53,664 square meters. 
Punta naman tayo sa question number 11. So, question number 11 is solving for the actual total gross floor area or TGFA. TGFA means yung lahat ng usable na horizontal areas and surfaces natin sa isang building that is above and below established grade. So, like for example, yung basement and cellar. So, pag sinabi mo ring TGFA, it specifically excludes yung provision for courts that are above grade level. So, hindi kasama yung mga courts na nasa taas ng grade. So, ang ibig sabihin nun, yung mga court na at grade level ay dapat kasama sa TGFA. Ano ba ibig sabihin nun? So, i-illustrate muna natin yung different floor levels natin nung project. So, we have the uh, basement and the ground floor, second floor, and roof deck. So, start muna tayo dito sa ground floor. From question number 2, nakuha na natin yung AMBF na 11,550 square meters. So, this is the building line ng footprint natin with the minimum setbacks na 5, 6, and 3. Now, doon sa loob ng footprint, meron tayong inner court na nakalculate natin sa question number 3 as 1,866 square meters with a dimension of 31.1 meter width and 60 meter length. This 1,866 square meter, sabi sa problem na inner court is open from the basement, simula sa basement at paakyat, butas paakyat. So, ibig sabihin, excluded sa, G, sa TGFA pa nung ground floor level yung inner court na to. Kasi since yung court natin is nasa basement ang grade level, hindi sa ground floor. So, pag i-illustrate natin yung profile, di ba ito yung basement natin? And according sa problem, yung basement is 1.35 meters below the minor road. So, ito yon And then yung ating minor road. And then the ground floor naman, okay? Sabi dun sa problem is 1 meter above the highway. So, nakaangat pa yung ground floor natin. Meaning, it's still a court na above grade level. So, ang line ng inner court natin is ito. And then, we project it downward towards the basement which is the bottom most level natin na magiging grade level natin. Yun ang may isasama lang doon sa TJFA, the court at grade. Since yung sa ground floor, it's a court above grade. So yung area natin for TJFA would only be equal to 11,550 square meters din. Kasi hindi kasama nga yung inner court. So ang building lines natin would have a dimension of 104 meter and 129 meters. Again, excluded yung 1,866 square meters. Now, sa basement naman, as per rule 8.G.F, tuon sa item number uh, 1.B, tsaka yung 1.E, sabi kailangan daw, for basement, yung OFB niya is parehas din doon sa OFB ng ground floor. Meaning, same yung setbacks na naka-apply for the ground floor level doon sa basement. So, ibig sabihin, yung building line natin, yung area, is pares din sa ground floor. 104 meters wide by 129 meters deep. And this is the line of our inner court na nasa uh, taas. So, sabi doon sa TGFA definition, yung courts at grade level daw, which is in our basement level, kasama doon sa definition T ng TGFA. So, yung ibig sabihin, if included yung court at grade level, yung basement natin would have a TGFA of kung ilan yung footprint natin, which is 13,416 meters, square meters, kasi 104 meter wide by 129 meters deep. Now, on the second floor, ito yung line natin ng ground floor sa baba, and sabi sa problem is yung floor plate daw ng second floor should have a projection outwards na nakalculate na rin natin to kanina sa question number 8 na may 12,724.56 square meters kasi mas malaki dahil sa 60% maximum projection of the, or the OLBP. So this is our second floor floor plate na may mga projections na maximum at 60% due to the limits of building projection. So, kung kukunin natin yung total 
width and depth ng ating floor plate, it's a 107.6 meters wide by um, 135.6 meters deep. And if we calculate the area of this floor plate, we have this amount of 14,590.56 pero imemenos pa natin yung inner court kasi excluded nga ang mga inner court that are above grade level like in our second floor. So, ang floor plate lang natin or TGFA would be this amount, 12,724.56 square meters. So, hindi kasali uli yung inner court. Now, for the roof deck, since nasa maximum projection line na siya nung second floor, yan din ang ating um, dimensions or limits ng ating roof deck area. So, same as the second floor below, which is 107.6 meters by 135.6 meters. So, ang TGFA natin would be the same as that of the second floor. So, the actual total gross floor area ng whole building natin would just be the sum of all the TGFA per floor na nakuha. So, ang resulting value niya is 50,415.12 square meters and that's our answer dun sa question number 11, actual TGFA of this project. Question number 12. What is the actual volume of the building above grade? A. 223,167 cubic meters B. 169,573 cubic meters C. 235,849 cubic meters D. 204,034 cubic meters or E. 196,758 cubic meters. Iwan ko muna ibang illustration kasi gagamitin natin sa pag-answer ng question number 12. The actual volume of the building above grade. So when we say volume above grade, remember yung ginawa natin doon sa AMVB doon sa question number 6 which pertains to the volume above the grade level pero tungkol ito sa allowable maximum na pwedeng itayo na volume doon sa prism. This time, we're talking about yung actual building volume using yung na-compute na building floor plate or the total gross floor area per floor and the actual height, yung given na floor-to-floor -floor heights. So, emphasize ko lang na this volume is the volume above grade level. That means lahat ng nasa ilalim, hindi na kailangan. So, tatanggalin natin yung portions na below grade level. Sa site profile, ito yung portion above grade. Kung gagamitin natin basihan yung actual TGFA, yung actual heights, and i-combine natin siya sa definition ng AMVB, kailangan yung volume na i-calculate natin kasama dapat yung mga courts since the definition of AMVB includes courts. So sa na-calculate nating TGFA sa ground floor kanina sa question number 11, i-add natin yung area ng inner court na 1,866 square meters to get the TGFA included yung courts since ang kinakalculate na natin dito is yung volume. So, sa ground floor, ang magiging effective na TGFA natin with respect to calculating the actual building volume would be 13,416 square meters, similar to our TGFA doon sa basement since kasama na yung inner courts that will be multiplied sa actual height to get the actual building volume of that ground floor. And then, same way sa second floor, isasama din uli yung 1,866 square meters na inner court area Add it to the TGFA na na-calculate ng question number 11 and we'll have 14,590.56 square meters. And in the roof deck, same sila nung second floor in terms of the horizontal surface area, 14,590.56 square meters then. Now for the basement, skip muna natin since medyo irregular yung shape nan. So part of the basement above grade will be added later on in computing the entire actual building volume. Now proceed tayo muna sa, sa ground floor. This 13,416 square meters is the horizontal area and then we need to find yung actual height ng ground floor up to the second floor na binanggit sa ating problem na 5.5 meters ang second floor above the ground floor. So we have a 5.5 meter na height and getting the volume will just multiply yung horizontal area times the height and we'll get 
73,788 cubic meters for the ground floor of our building. So, tanggalin ko muna itong ground floor since nasolve na natin yung volume. Then, we proceed with the second floor. Our horizontal area is 14,590.56 square meters included yung courts. Okay? And the height of our second floor to the roof deck according to the client preference is 4.5 meters. And then, remember our second floor has a maximum projection. So, yung building uh, or yung second floor floor plate natin is naka-extend outwards from the ground floor so this is our 4.5 meter height and getting the volume multiply the horizontal area times the height and we'll get 65,657.52 cubic meters that's for the second floor now for the roof deck and we have our parapet wall and remember dun sa question number 10 we already solved the height of the parapet wall due to the angular plane limits, yung measurement from the center line of the road right of way to be 1.55 meters lang yung height based on the minor road. Kasi yung, yung na-compute natin sa highway, lalagpas siya doon sa angular plane. So our horizontal area sa roof deck, same sa second floor, 14,590.56 square meters, but yung height would be only 1.55 meters, the height of the parapet wall. Multiplying both values, we have the volume for the roof deck na 22,615.368 cubic meters. So, burahin na natin yung roof deck plan. So, dito na tayo sa basement. The TGFA computed in question number 11 is 13,416 square meters. That's the horizontal area. But the problem is sloping yung lot natin, which has a 2.25 slope. So, yung horizontal area cannot be applied doon sa slope kasi itong broken line, yan yung horizontal projected area. Hindi siya kaparehas nung area nung naka-inclined na surface. If we get the volume using the same formula na horizontal area times the height, we can only get this portion, yung rectangular area above this broken red line, all the way up to the ground floor. Pero yung broken line na to, is below the highway. And what we know so far is yung ground floor line natin is 1 meter above the highway. So what we need to do is to calculate yung maliit na vertical distance from that broken line to the highway. So since we have a 6 meter setback and then a 2.25% slope, we could calculate the height or the rise of this small vertical distance to be slope of 2.25% times 6 meter run is equal to 0.135 meter height. So, the total height of this broken red line, a horizontal area ng basement, up to the ground floor line would be 1 meter plus yung 0.135 meter is equal to 1.135 meters. This means that we could get the volume of this small rectangular portion in the site profile by multiplying the horizontal area of the TGFA of the basement of 13,416 square meters times the 1.135 meter calculated height. And our resulting volume is 15,227.16 cubic meters. And that's only for the upper portion. Now, below that horizontal projected line, meron pa tayong natitira na portion of the basement above grade. And that's a right triangle na may certain height papunta dun sa lowest adjoining grade. And then, the right triangle also has a length or a run which is equal to our building depth of 129 meters. So, solving for the rise is 0 0.0225 the slope multiplied by the run of 129 meters is equal to 2.9025 meters rise. So, now that we have the rise and the run, we could get the area of our right triangle by multiplying 2.9025 and 129 meter divided by 2, and we have an area of 187.21125 square meters. And remember, this area is a vertical area kasi sa elevation natin kinakalculate yung triangle. And getting the volume of this triangular portion of the basement above grade will just multiply the area with our building width of 104 meters. So, the area of 187.21125 square meters times 104 meter building width we'll get a 19,469.97 cubic meters of volume for that triangular portion. So, calculating the actual volume of the building above grade is all of these highlighted portion. We'll just sum up all of the volumes that we have calculated for the roof deck, second floor, ground floor, and the two parts of the basement above grade. 
and we'll have a total actual volume of 196,758.018 cubic meters. So that's our answer for question number 12. Letter E, 196,758 cubic meters for the actual volume of the building above the grade. Question number 13. Specify the minimum required number of parking slots for this project as per code. A. 122 parking slots. B. 143 parking slots. C. 276 parking slots. D. 284 parking slots. Or E. 352 parking slots. Now let's solve for question number 13. The minimum required number of parking slots. The parking slot requirements in the building code can be seen in Table 8.4. For Group E, which is what our project is, there's a building user occupancy that's written there pertaining to units located in office, commercial, or mixed-use condominium buildings or structures, and its corresponding minimum parking requirements depending on the size of the units. So for units with a gross floor area of from 18 square meters to 40 square meters, ang kailangan na parking slot daw is provide one parking slot per two units or for a fraction thereof. And then for units with a gross floor area of from 41 square meters up to 70 square meters, we must provide a ratio ng parking slot na 1 is to 1 or 1 parking slot per 1 unit. And for units with a gross floor area na more than 70 square meters, kailangan mag-provide ng 1 parking slot per 70 square meter of floor area and for a fraction thereof. Now, according sa client requirements, nabanggit na doon kung ilan yung area ng mga commercial units sa building. For retail stores, according to the client preferences, 35% down ng total gross floor area or TGFA ng ground floor and second floor is occupied by the retail. And the retail stores then, sabi sa requirements, may floor area to dapat ng 69 square meters pero hindi lalagpas ng 70 square meters per unit. So, illustrate natin yung ating tatlong floors, basement, ground floor, and second floor. Sa ground floor muna tayo, we have a total gross floor area ng ground floor na compute natin in question number 11 to be 11,550 square meters or similar din doon sa ating AMBF. And for the basement, in question number 11, mas malaki kasi kasama na yung courts at grade, so TGFA of 13,416 square meters. And for the second floor, we have a projected floor plate away from the ground floor at a 60% maximum projection, yung OLVP. Ang TGFA is 12,724.56 square meters. Okay? From question number 8 na compute natin dito. Now, ang retail stores natin per unit is 69 square meters lang on the average at hindi lalagpas ng 70 per unit. So, ibig sabihin, doon sa table 7.4, we'll use the provision na commercial units with a gross floor area from 41 to 70 kasi kahit na anong mangyari, sabi sa problem, hindi dapat lumagpas ng 70 ang isang retail na unit dito sa ating project. That means, ang provision na susundan natin is yung one parking slot per one unit. So, to solve for the number of parking slots, kailangan makompute muna natin yung exact number of units ng retail stores per floor. So, at the ground floor, sabi diba 35% ng TGFA. Since our TGFA is 11,550 square meters for the ground floor, 35% of that is 4,042.5 square meters. So, number of stores natin at the ground floor would be 4,042.5 square meters divided by yung average area of the retail store of 69 square meters is equal to 58.58695 stores. So, may butal, ano? Paano gagawin? Kailangan yung 58.587 ma-round down sa 58 stores. Hindi tayo pwedeng mag-round up sa 59. Bakit? Kasi pag ginawa natin 59 yung stores and we multiply it by the average floor area of 69 square meters, lalagpas na tayo dun sa 4,042.50 square meters na value. Which is, sabi sa problem, kailangan 35% lang ng TGFA ng ground floor yung i-occupy ng mga retail stores. So, yung 58.587 natin na may butal na value, kailangan i-round down natin into an exact 
number na 58 para pag nag-compute tayo ng parking slot per unit, since ang ginagamit natin na ratio would be 1 parking slot per 1 unit, magiging eksakto din yung amount and walang fraction. So, punta tayo sa second floor naman, 35% pa rin ng TGFA ng second floor. The 12,724.56, 35% of that is 4,453.596 square meters. Calculating for the number of stores, divide that area by 69 square meters of the average floor area ng isang retail store and we'll get 64.545 stores. So may butal uli and we round that down to 64 stores. So the total number of retail stores would be 58 stores sa ground floor at 64 stores sa second floor or a total of 122 retail stores. And each of these 122 retail stores would be 69 square meters up to 70 square meters per unit of floor area. Since the provision sa table 7.4 is provide one parking slot per one unit, kasi yung area ng retail stores natin per unit is hindi lalagpas ng 70 square meters, that means 122 yung parking slots din. So is this the answer na doon sa question 13? Hindi pa kasi, di ba, retail stores pa lang ito. And remember sa problem, meron pa tayong main store. Yung bulk ng actual na project natin is composed of the main store na nag occupy daw, sabi sa client preference, is 30% ng TGFA ng basement, ng ground floor, at saka ng second floor. So to compute for the parking slot requirement for the main store, we'll just add up all of the TGFA per floor and we'll have a value of 37,690.56 square meters. Yan yung kabuuan ng basement, ground floor, and second floor. And multiply that by 30% since yun yung requirements sa main store, we'll have a value of 11,307.168 square meters. And that's the amount ng area na kailangan ilagay sa building natin for the main stores. For the parking requirements, since 11,307.168 yung area ng main store, it falls under doon sa units with a gross floor area of more than 70 square meters. That means the provision for the parking requirement would be one parking slot per 70 square meter of that area, yung 11,307 square meters, and for a fraction thereof. So, let's compute. Burahin natin to. So, the number of parking slots for the main store would be 11,307.168 square meters divided by yung parking requirement natin na 70 square meters for one parking slot is equal to 161.53097 slots. Since may butal, and nasabi, provide one parking slot for a fraction thereof, that means the fraction of 0 0.53097 would be equivalent to one parking slot. So at this time, ira-round up naman natin yung 161.53097 into 162 parking slots and these slots are for the main store naman. So, the total minimum parking slots for the whole building would be 122 parking slots for the retail and 162 parking slots for the main store or a grand total of 284 parking slots. So, that's our answer for question number 13. The minimum required number of parking slots for this project. Question number 14. Determine the actual floor to lot area ratio or FLAR of this project. A. 1.7224 B. 1.2859 C. 1.4974 D. 1.7588 or E. 1.2496 Now let's solve for the last item. Question number 14. The actual floor-to-lot area ratio or FLAR of this project. Now, recall the definition of GFA. Diba? GFA is equal to TLA or total lot area times FLAR or the floor-to-lot area ratio. So, ibig sabihin, FLAR is equal to GFA over the TLA. Now, remember that FLAR is based on the gross floor area or GFA and hindi yung TGFA or total gross floor area. Magkaiba yung dalawa. TGFA, according to the code, includes yung mga parking, driveway, services and utilities, open roof decks, etc. Pero sa GFA, hindi kasama yung mga kasamang items dun sa TGFA. So, paano natin kukunin yung GFA for our project? Let's review the client requirements and tingnan natin kung ano yung mga spaces sa loob ng ating building. Nandudun siya sa item number 4 ng client preferences. 
meron tayong main store daw na kailangan 30% nung TGFA noong basement, ground floor, and second floor. Meron din mga services and utilities na nag-o-occupy ng 5% ng TGFA ng basement, ground floor, and second floor. May retail stores tayo na 35% ng TGFA pero nung ground floor and second floor lang. And then may ibang spaces na common areas, non-leasable na spaces like toilets and circulation para sa ground floor and second floor and yung parking para sa basement. And then meron roof deck na nagko-contain lang daw ng mechanical equipment. So, hihimayin natin bawat floors. So, yung TGFA, nakalculate na natin sa question number 11 kanina. So, ililista natin bawat floor para meron tayong basis. So, 12,724.56 square meters sa roof deck and second floor, 11,550 sa ground floor, at 13,416 sa basement. And then, yung mga uses and space allocation sa loob ng building, ililist daw natin per floor in a table form. So, 100% ng roof deck, sabi, is utilities. So, that's the whole entire TGFA. Now, yung nakalista sa client requirements, yung main store, 30% daw sa basement, ground floor, and second floor. So, ilista natin yung main store sa bawat floors. So, another one, and then sa basement. Okay. And then, let's compute. Ilan ba ang 30% nung second floor, TGFA? That's 3,817.368 square meters. Sa ground floor naman is 3,465 square meters and 30% ng basement is 4,024.8 square meters. Services and utilities naman is 5% lang nung bawat floors ulit. Basement, ground floor, and second floor. So, 5% of the second floor TGFA is 636.228 square meters. Sa ground floor naman is 577.5 square meters. And sa basement is 670.8 square meters. Retail stores accounts for 35% nung ground floor and second floor lang. Wala sa basement. So, 35% ng second floor is 4453.596 square meters. And 35% ng ground floor is 4042.5 square meters. So, remaining floor areas at the toilets and circulation sa second floor and ground floor, ang remaining na lang is 30% kasi 65% ma-occupy na natin. So, that's toilets and circulation. Ganun din sa ground floor, 30% na lang ang natitira since 65% occupied na. And then, for the basement, we have the parking. Ang remaining na space na natitira na lang, since 35% pa lang na-occupy, may 65% pa tayong allotted for the parking. So, 30% nung second floor, For the toilets and circulation is 3817.368 square meters then. And 30% ng ground floor is 3465 square meters then. And for the basement, yung 65% ng TGFA ng basement is 8720.4 square meters. Ang sabi natin kanina, yung FALAR is based on GFA. And yung GFA excludes yung mga parking, driveways, services, utilities, and roof decks. So, doon sa mga nalista nating spaces na inallocate natin sa buong TGFA per floor, i-identify natin kung ano yung mga spaces na excluded. So, sa roof deck, excluded yung buong area since utilities lang ang purpose niya. Sa second floor, excluded yung utilities na 5%. Ganun din sa ground floor. Sa basement naman, may 5% na utilities excluded and yung parking excluded din. Since lahat ng mga identified spaces na to are non-GFA, hindi kasali sa gross floor area calculations. So, ano na lang ang mga natitirang spaces for the GFA? Sa roof deck, wala. 0%. Kasi lahat sila non-GFA. Sa second floor naman, may 30%, 35%, and 30% are all kasama sa GFA, to 95%. Sa ground floor, ganun din. 95% din. And sa basement, yung 30% lang ang kasali sa GFA. So, yung percentage na to is the percentage ng GFA over the TGFA. So, sa roof deck, 0%. So, wala. 0 square meter ang GFA area. Sa second floor naman, 95% ng TGFA is 12,088.332 square meters. Yan yung GFA spaces. Sa ground floor naman, 95% times the TGFA is 10,972.5 square meters that are GFA spaces or GFA areas. Sa basement, since yung main store lang yung GFA area, which is 30% nung TGFA of the basement, that's 4,024.8 square meters. So, meron na tayong GFA spaces per floor. Ito-total lang natin lahat to to get the actual gross floor area of the entire building. So, the total sum of all the GFA of each floor is 27,085.632 square meters. 
And since the calculation of FALAR is gross floor area over the total lot area, we could get the actual FALAR by simply dividing the actual gross floor area of the entire building of 27,085.632 square meters over the total lot area of 15,400 square meters and we'll get an answer na 1.7588 which is also equivalent to 175.88% ng lot area. Diba FALAR is a ratio ng gross floor area over the lot area. So that means yung floor area ng building natin, pwera yung mga parking, driveway, services, utilities, and yung roof deck, nag-occupy tayo ng 1.7588 times the lot area na pinagtayuan ng ating building na 15,400 square meters. So the answer to question number 14, the actual floor to lot area ratio or FALAR is D, 1.7588. Alright, so all questions have now been answered base sa ating 2004 Implementing Rules and Regulations or IRR ng ating National Building Code of the Philippines or PD-1096. So I hope you have learned a lot from this video on how to use the provisions na makikita sa Rules 7 and 8 of our Building Code. Now if you have any questions, clarifications, or any other suggestions, just leave a comment and I'll try my best na sagutan yung mga katanungan ninyo agad. And if you're new to the channel and want to learn more about the things that I do and the things that I share, click the subscribe button and the notification bell down below para makareceive agad kayo ng updates if I post newer videos. Again, this is Rice and John. Thank you so much for watching and let's all continue learning.